my boy did that. I got all my kids out to school and my youngest one who's not yet in school she comes up to me and in her cute little baby talk says you have you have to come see I okay yes I will come what and she drags me into my office and I am faced with this monstrosity instantly I think I'm gonna try and, and make this permanent I love it so much so the JG Maker Artist D. I don't want to bury the lead on this one. Should you back this Kickstarter? Well, there's a reason why I'm pushing this video out. I need to get this video out before the Kickstarter ends because my answer is yes. But uh, that yes comes with a big asterisk on it of conditionality. Is that even a word? To understand that asterisk, though, we need to go back to the beginning of my experience with this 3D printer. So the day that I unboxed it and put it together, as I talked to you about Kickstarters and 3D printers, it went together extremely fast. In fact, there's one thing that they did on this printer that I love that I think more people should do. But because all these cables look the same, they put little numbered stickers and then put a matching number next to the port that they plug into and it was super easy it was just color by numbers click 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 and it all went together you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna put another thing on here gold star for you jg aurora good job on thinking about the user experience in putting this thing together then i tried to level the print bed like you do and when it got to the z it Duk, 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 duk. The Z-axis limit switch wasn't being triggered. So I ran it up and tried it again and triggered it by my finger and it, it just was not responding. Contacted JG Aurora and their response was, yeah, the, the switch, you might need to switch. You might need to change the switch with the switch from the filament sensor up here. And these two are on different jumper boards, so I thought they were saying that I needed to unsolder this switch and put it down here. I'm like, I'm not, it might be a bad cable. I'm not going to do that. That's ridiculous. So instead, I had to trace the cable. I flipped this thing over. I took off the casing. I clipped like a dozen zip ties off of this thing and pried apart some incredibly stiff cable sleeves in order to trace the line of the cables from, from the Z-axis switch to the motherboard. And what I discovered was when I traced this switch to its source, it was plugged into the place that this switch goes. And if I trace this switch back to the source, it was plugged into the place that this switch goes. They were plugged into the wrong places on the motherboard. Well, actually, more accurately, they were plugged into the wrong places on the jumper box. See, this thing has little boxes so that the top can come apart. They just put a little interface box and they have two connectors there. One is colored black, one is colored white, and the two connectors are also colored black and white. So you plug the black into the black and the white into the right, right? Well, they were telling me to switch those cables because they got them backwards and they knew it but they didn't communicate that to me well enough so i spent nearly a week tearing this thing apart and tracing cables to figure that out that is a question of quality assurance and that is something that had they gotten right had somebody doing the qa put this thing together and said uh we got these two backwards we need to fix them before we send this out because this is going to confuse that should never happen but okay i got that finally fixed and then i went to level the bed and i wish i could say that that was the end of my problems but this 3d printer has a weird print bed they decided to put a peg in the middle of this build plate and i think their reasoning was because this build plate is so large like i said it's a cr10 size build plate they thought, well, we need to prevent it from sagging, and so we'll put a peg up in here, but it creates an entirely new problem. See, now in order to level it, you have to make sure that 
first of all, that the leveling switch is in the right vicinity. It's it's on a pivot. It can move up and down a little bit, and so you might have to move it up and down. But even then, then you have to move it to the middle and get the Z offset in the software right. So you have to up and down the Z offset and see if you can figure out, I got a piece of paper on that. And then, and then you go ahead and you try and level the four corners. And I mean, okay, y'all understand, right? That three points make a plane. When you have four points, you could have two of them high and two of them low, which causes a fold in the bed. But you don't know which way to fold the fold. You're going to go this way or it's going to go this way. It's not going to go both, so it's not going to like bend and forward. Like, like, this goes back to Frederick Carl Gauss and his remarkable theorem. Like, the whole thing about pizzas being able to be folded one way or the other. They don't flop down, but they, they because when you fold them, they can't fold the other direction. And so, yeah, this is going to bend one way or taco or mountain, and you don't know which way it's going to go. But you wouldn't have that problem if you just had three points. But this, this has five. Five points. So not four. Not three. You don't have three, but it's got five. And that's like, you're just spitting in the face of Carl Gauss. It's just with good grief, people. Why? I think I needed to get that out of my system, but I got past that, okay? I figured that out. I got the bed leveled, and I started printing. Now, at this point, you might think that I'm about ready to tear into this machine and, and rip it a new hole because I really don't like it, except that the prints that came off of it were immediately amazing. I decided for my first print, I would go back to the beginning. For me, the very first model that I uploaded to Thingiverse was a, a set of Chinese chess set pieces, except if you've ever played Chinese chess, you know that they've got Chinese symbols on them, and that's a little bit intimidating to non-Chinese speakers. So I decided to trade the Chinese symbols for icons that might be a little bit more recognizable to Western audiences. I also, it was important for me that the backs be the same. So, you know, they had to have this little dip. And the first version that I uploaded to Thingiverse, the first, even before I had a 3D printer, uh, just had a cavity there and you would fill it with paint. And it took a lot of post-processing to get a finished set. But I thought with this machine, I could just create an inset for it a secondary STL that goes along with it with this exact same set and you could fill in that hole automatically and I did and they all worked fantastically. See part of the problem with dual material printing up to this point with all of the machines that I've been dual material printing with since the beginning of my time with 3D printing. My first 3D printer which is behind the one big googly eye here was a dual material print, the MakerBot Replicator 1, but the two nozzles were locked to each other, which meant that if you printed something large and flat, or, or even small things, but that were next to each other, you had to think about where that second nozzle was because it might, not might, it would definitely drool on the other pieces and there'd be a lot of garbage to clean up. And I didn't realize that Part of the reason why I don't utilize dual material prints very much is because I was very worried about that contamination. And you can see that worry if you go back and watch my 10 minute chess set video where I have to take the print and I have to stand it up and I have to rotate it so that the second nozzle will always be out of the way while it's printing. And even then it had some artifacts. So I decided, you know what, just to test it. I'd print a chess set, a chess board, I mean. This is a mini chess board, a minute chess board. It's, it's only five by six, so you only need to 3D print one of each piece because while I love chess pieces, I don't actually love playing the game of chess, so one each is enough for me. I discovered minute chess and I'm like, cool. I printed this chess board lying down the way that I would never do it on these printers because the second nozzle would be constantly drooling all over this one, but it didn't on this machine. Because the nozzles got out of the way, this print is clean and beautiful. And at this point, I'm starting to feel something. I'm starting to feel something that I haven't felt in a long time. I'm starting to feel excited to design for this 3D printer. I printed the pet monster from Andreas B from Hamburg, Germany. And uh, 
it turned out fantastic. In fact, I even intentionally put the brown nozzle on the left and the green nozzle on the right so that it would have to travel across each other in order to do it. I was trying to catch this thing drooling even just a little bit and see if I would see any artifacts. And yet this is the cleanest, absolutely perfect dual material 3D print. I've never seen any 3D printer that could do this, at, especially not at this price point, especially not at this level of availability for people. I, I am super impressed. Now, another thing that this can do, because both of these nozzles are on the same axis, they can't move entirely independently of each other, but because they're moving left and right independently, you've got two options. You could potentially turn both nozzles on and print two of the same thing, or you can turn on mirror mode and print two of them where one of them is a mirror image of the other. Now, why would you ever want to do that? Well, I got a chessboard. Let's take the twisty chess set, the spiral chess set by Big Bad Bison or Joey Murhead from Vancouver, Canada. This spirally chess set is kind of fun, but if we print it in mirror, the spirals go in opposite directions. And I think that makes a really neat dichotomy for this particular 3D printer to be able to do. Now, of course, you could do this with a normal 3D printer, just mirror the one set and print them both in different filaments. But that this could do them at the exact same time. That's fun, and that's a little bit exciting. I haven't had a chance to play with doing, you know, like a soft and a hard material interlocking them, but this could do it because, oh, did I mention, it's a direct drive machine. Yes, these, the, the feeder mechanisms are down here, not up here. Although the filament out detection is up here. Shouldn't that be down there? I may have to mod this machine in a little bit. Oh yeah, it's moddable. Like I completely expect that people will have BL touches on this thing in the very near future. I expect that yeah, little mods like this will happen. After I cracked it open, I realized, yeah, this is completely hackable. And this particular version is running Bear Marlin. Even though I could complain a little bit about Bear Marlin. Now, if you've ever seen any of my other reviews for 3D printers, I grade my 3D printers on a three axis scale. And the problem with me grading this printer, this one that I have right here, is that if you back this Kickstarter, yours might be slightly different from it. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But I think that the grade that I will give this printer is at least in the area of where the final one will be. The first axis is price. And yes, it's price is what it is. But if you don't back the Kickstarter, the price is going to change after the Kickstarter. But Chinese manufacturers often discount things, so maybe it'll be back within that region. I, I, I can't say. The second axis is ease of use, and that includes not only how easy is it to use, but how easy was it to set up and how easy is it to maintain. And this one, this one's a little bit of plus and minus when I add it all up. Obviously, I had a huge headache setting it up. Will you have a huge headache setting it up? Hopefully not. I've talked to JG Maker. They know the problems that I've had. They'll watch this video as well. And hopefully they'll learn from that and deliver to Kickstarter backers a just slightly better experience than the one that I had. But on the other hand, I can't promise you that. And I don't know. Also, like I said, it's a bare Marlin user interface. And that always gets knocked down in my mind, especially considering the fact that JG Maker has an option that they're not taking with that one. But there we go. It's, it's a minus on ease of use on that one. But like I said, building it and putting it together, they, they thought about the users and they put stickers on there. So it kind of gets, I mean, it got the gold star for that one and that's ease of use that it goes into. So 
I'm going to say ease of use, this one's kind of a wash. It's not any easier to use than any other 3D printer, but at the same time, capability. This is a super capable machine. Not only can it do dual materials, which opens up a world of possibilities, but it's also a large format 3D printer. It's this 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 320, whatever. It's, it's, it's huge. It's, it's about the size of like a, a statue of a person's head and show a bust. It's, it's, it's bust size. Ooh, wait. It's large. And because of that, it's, super capable. This is probably the most capable 3D printer that I've ever had. And aside from building your own 3D printer, this is probably the most capable 3D printer that you can buy, especially for the price. It's an amazing, amazing printer. And I don't know how they got this much capability this cheap. And it seems to me like Dual independent extruders is the next step that a lot of Chinese manufacturers are going to. So it's exciting to me that they're getting that down. But if you add that in, yes, it's ease of use is not any better than any other 3D printer. But for that, no harder, no easier than any other 3D printer. It's way more capable. It shoots this machine up to a huge area on that grading chart and puts it well within the recommendation. But now we come to the asterisk. This printer isn't for everybody. If this is your first 3D printer, well, you'd have to be fairly capable. But if you're not afraid to tinker, if you're not afraid to take apart a couple of screws and, and play with the innards of a machine, then honestly, I think you should really, really consider throwing, honestly, not much money to get an incredibly capable machine. I'm always looking for 3D printers that give a high value for the money, and this machine, this machine is definitely it, but I don't know what the price will be after the Kickstarter, so I just don't want anybody to miss out on the opportunity, because what this will open up to you I'm excited to have this machine right now, even imperfect and frustrating as it was to get it to this point at this point. Yeah, not bad. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. Oh, bean soup for lunch. I wonder if the mic caught that.